So we've got another fun one for you, and I and I get lots of these on the uh, on the channel. Basically, these 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 uh, scenarios like I've got a small space, and I'm trying to make. I'm looking for one piece of equipment that can solve all my problems. So here's 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 the here's the I guess is the, there's some questions and also some um, dialogue here. So the guy said if I want if I, if I use one of these bad boys in an airtight cabin in climate zone three which is you know close to us uh in, here in georgia with one big room and one bathroom where's the opinion on bending the bathroom i feel like bending the outside with the 50 cfm fan would create a negative pressure in the house and defeat the purpose of a 40 cfm erv but if i use a through the wall fan to put the bathroom air in the main room near the outtake of the erv i'll risk bringing parts into the room tap like and smash the subscribe button uh, kind of reasonably go without bathroom ventilation, and he, he thanks us for the last video because I think this is this is where we kind of broke apart the ERV last time and talked about the nomenclature of it. So um, he also asked uh, about a pre filter. We can kind of get well. Let's let's actually hold off on the pre filter. So if somebody has like a like a cabin or like a small room or a small space she shed art studio i get a lot of these kind of questions um what is the best ventilation method um that, that you recommend for something like that well and so this is a, a huge problem throughout the u.s right and 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 i know we're, we're talking about cabins and she sheds and whatnot but um we see this in the multifamily world a lot where you have a small footprint living space with a large population that occupies it and you want the best value and the best strategy for everybody, right? Um, and I'll tell you right now that by far the best is going to be um, an ERV into the central space and plumbing fresh air, supply air into that. If there is a bedroom, you put supply air into the bedroom. And that's actually, that's part of the new code program for multifamilies. If you look at the international mechanical codes, they're all going to require supply air, fresh air into the bedrooms. And you can exhaust the air from a central space. And, and I'll, I'll caution you about using the ERV in the bathroom, for example, um, to pull air out of the bathroom. It, it's done quite often, but oftentimes the bathroom doesn't have, you know, it, it's, a, it's a saturation point. I, I would always recommend it, and you can get really low cost exhaust fans, but uh, I would caution and advise that you put an independent exhaust fan exhausting that high moisture load directly out of the house because all you're going to do is is potentially recirculate some of that moisture throughout your house and in your climate matt where you have air conditioning on the inside of the house what i don't want to do is i don't want to dump a bunch of moist air back into another space where i have a cold wall or i have a air conditioning diffuser blowing against a hard surface it's going to lower the temperature of that service and of that surface and now you've got a, a potential condensation space right there so you know, if you've ever seen moisture on your, your grill register diffusers for air conditioning and so forth, that's a function of, of having moisture from maybe a bathroom or a cooking surface that's being redistributed throughout your house. So, so I'm going to say if you have a high moisture load generated from inside the house, that you evacuate that out immediately, right? The moisture from the outside of the house, the ERV will actually reject a lot of that moisture. Remember the ERV and a latent component is going to try to balance moisture from inside to outside. So it's going to, it's going to diminish the amount of moisture coming into the house considerably. Uh, and then your, your air, if you do have air conditioning, your air conditioning will also pull that additional moisture out. So it's minimizing how much moisture comes into the house. Um, yeah, and I, th I think their question kind of like teetered on like balanced ventilation. So I know... Right. ERVs in themselves are balanced, but as soon as you add other exhaust mechanisms in the house, like the bath fan, um, it's be especially the kitchen deal. range, like what, what what do you do with that makeup air? He's in climate zone three, uh, could be humid. Uh, you're bringing in some of that, that moist air. So, I mean, I, I would also, you know, I think I think my I may have su suggested also if, if he had like a mini split system that had some sort of um, I mean, because you could have a mini split. Obviously, you need heating and cooling. Um, but then, then also, like, what is what? Is, how are you going to remove moisture that you know makes it past the bath fan? 
um or that comes into the space from the outside or just fr from just like cooking and stuff like that if 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 you don't have the proper ventilation so um, i mean you can have an, another but at, at what point do you have like five different pieces of equipment so what, what i was trying to figure out you know is there maybe um a mini split that also has a dehumidification mode that might help a little bit um again it's it's, it's going to probably overcool the space when it's trying to do that but um well a lot of know, the it, it can get complicated quickly trying to make it perfect right i know at our, our panasonic ductless heat pump products we do have a dehumidification mode where um the air essentially what we do is we cycle the air past the condenser but we keep the veins somewhat close so we're not redistributing that air back into the space it's just taking past the condenser that back to, past the condenser if you will the the fins and it drops that moisture out before it goes back in it's not using a it, it essentially it, it it identifies dew point in the space based on humidity uh, and then takes that condenser temperature and goes just below dew point so that that moisture will drop. Oh, nice yeah so so and there's and panasonic does a great job of it but a lot of different manufacturers um, of ductless heat pump products will have that capability so it's it's not an uncommon strategy in a house yeah i forgot you had those heat pumps um i mean essentially you've got the full ventilation system yeah the, heating, you know, yeah, the whole the... heating ventilation air conditioning package we can we can do that i mean we go all the way through the you know in the home uh i can do everything from energy modeling to batteries and 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 then whatnot with our solar packages, battery packages, our HVAC packages, our ventilation in, in particular, which is our group that we work, that I work, uh, I work in, right? Well, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and again, it really depends on budget too. You can spend a little bit. Um, my sure basic does. would be like at least having some sort of HVAC system, and an ERV just because the space is so tight. If you have a lot of people in there, you can use up the oxygen. You need that fresh air by code pretty quickly. And then, you know, if you have more of a budget, then then you can add more more systems for sure. It really depends on usage as well. I, um, I remind people. I remind people about the ERV. You know, the ERV is basically a it's a six inch supply air duct and a six inch exhaust air duct, right? So let's say I did turn a range hood on. I'm still, you know, the air is going to move from the path of least resistance. So I have this six inch hole, you know, in, in my wall coming back through the ERV. So that that depressurization is going to affect that supply air path. It's going to bring more supply air in through the ERV, which means you're still going to get tempered air rather than just having it come through the cracks and crevices. You're still going to get some dehumidification of that moisture load that's um, passing through the core, it's going to reject uh, a certain amount of that just because. Um, and and yeah, so so that honestly solves a lot of problems when you have these secondary exhaust sources, right? Uh, because when you design your structure, you don't design unless you go over 300 CFM for the range hood. You you're not required to to do anything for supplier strategy. So the ERV can become that default strategy, just like that. Yeah, we're also, I mean, we're also assuming this is new construction. So new construction obviously is going to be built tighter or should be built a little bit tighter. If it's if it's an existing or say it's like, I think he might even said this was a log cabin. Um well, he says airtight, actually. So he, he said this one was an airtight cabin, but I've seen some some ones that are solid wood. And basically, as the wood expands and contracts with the moisture, I've seen gaps appear. So like in my house, I've got a fireplace. And again, I'm in climate zone three. I don't need a fireplace. So when the range hood is on, you know, that makeup air is coming from the fireplace unless you crack a window and, and provide another uh, a ventilation yeah, strategy where good. like the makeup air can be in the same right. zone because I, I prefer a zonal makeup air. So that, that's the other thing with this, this ventilation methods is that people need to be careful. It's like, hey, ventilation is good, especially if you're doing exhaust ventilation, but you need to be cognizant of how is that makeup air coming in. Is coming in through cracks and crevices of your crawl space, your basement, um, or polluted sources, you're bringing that pollution in. If if you have an ERV, like you said, if it's if it's a tight space and it's designed where that's your leakiest point, the ERV is allowing that air to come in. That's great, but most cases, air is just going to come in wherever it can come in. It's the path of least resistance. So, right. you know, my, my suggestion is just being you know aware of what that is, and hopefully, it is the ERV, so you can pre-filter that air coming in. 
Boy, and I have to tell you, anytime I see a combustion source in a house, um, I really do lean towards a balanced strategy because that it just it's there's just uh, so many problems that can come from having an you know an exhaust whether it's intermittent or continuous, and having a combustion source with inside inside that envelope, and um, it can be frightening. I mean that that's a whole other conversation, for, right? For sure. I mean that, I, I've been trying to get away from combustion. For the safety reasons, not necessarily for ecological reasons. Now you've got ecological and safety reasons. But like say 20 years ago, the combustion was the more efficient of the two. Electric wasn't quite there yet when it came to heat pumps and a lot of these like cooking and whatnot. Now, if you look at the equivalent like high performance electric versus gas, the electric actually blows gas away and it's not a volatile source. You don't have to worry about like, hey, where am I getting it from? Is there right. a war about having to buy it, you know, off the black market? So, I, I mean, obviously we don't have those problems in the U S but, but right. you know, other countries are like, yeah, we got to cut down our trees now. Yeah. You know, these are, these are, uh, oh yeah, you're in your, you're, you're close to Canada. So you can get that. Um, well that, that's, yeah, again, these, these are, these are good metas to definitely consider for that evening. I appreciate your answering that question. Thanks for asking the question as well. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I also want to thank Ken for coming on to answer all of your questions. Now, if you have more questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll go through these. And after we have like five or six really good ones that are unique, what we'll do is like I'll get Ken back on Zoom or we'll meet at the International Builder Show or in person, answer your questions for you because I know you guys have lots of questions, especially when it comes to ventilation. We've loaded up some additional videos just like this off to the side. Don't forget to hit like and the subscribe button. See you guys next time.